Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Pressure is mounting on the Cuomo administration to release more information on the state's handling of COVID-19 at nursing homes, including a more detailed breakdown of residents killed by the virus. You'll remember that last week, State Health Commissioner Howard Zucker came out with a number of residents who died at hospitals, something we didn't know before. But lawmakers are looking for more, like the number of COVID-19 cases at nursing homes, which we don't know, and what happened behind closed doors that led to some of the state's most controversial decisions during the pandemic. And if they don't get that information in the next few weeks, Democrats say they might issue a subpoena to get it. But others don't want to wait. Republicans in the state legislature drafted their own subpoena this week. They're in the minority in both the Senate and the Assembly, so they can't issue it on their own. But they're hoping they can pressure Democrats to move forward. We've had a subpoena drafted. And if any of my colleagues in the Senate majority are really serious about issuing a subpoena and launching a thorough investigation, all they have to do is sign and send it. But sources tell New York Now that Democrats have no immediate plans to issue a subpoena to the Cuomo administration. Let's discuss that and more with Jesse McKinley from The New York Times and Bernadette Hogan from The New York Post. Thank you both for being here. Of course. Thanks. Bern, let's start with you. We have been talking about a subpoena to the Cuomo people for six months from Democrats in the Senate. Why haven't they pulled the trigger? What are they saying? Right. So the the threat of subpoena was first raised in August when lawmakers had a legislative hearing where uh, State DOH Commissioner Howard Zucker was testifying in regards to health matters, but specifically nursing homes, because lawmakers were trying to seek answers that many reporters, families, advocates of residents in nursing homes were seeking for months. And one of those major topics was how many people actually died in long-term care facilities. But not only that, how many people got so sick that they were transferred to hospitals and died there. So this is something that the state used to report. They stopped reporting this figure of how many people died outside of those facilities back in May. So lawmakers have been threatening this for roughly since the summer. So what is that, six months? But Mm -hmm. this is also subject to a lawsuit that I suppose we can later talk about that was just one by a nonprofit, the Empire Center, that said the State Department of Health has to release that total figure. Now, lawmakers, again, were threatening this in the summer. They never went through with it. But again, this specter was raised last Monday, saying, if you guys don't produce the accurate total, that the data that we're seeking, we will subpoena you to release that information, because you have it. It's submitted to the state. You have it. Right. Jesse, do you think they go through the subpoena later this month? They've given a February 25th deadline. That's the health budget hearing. Do you think Democrats actually do that and more fissure their relationship with the governor? No, I don't. I I don't think it's likely that the Democrats go to war on this yet. But I will say that the last week has been, how to put it, not a good news week for the Cuomo administration. Between Letitia James' report that came out last Thursday, I think, which basically showed that the Cuomo administration had been withholding data, between our reporting about the DOH and the departures there, between our data reporting showing that they're basically cherry picking numbers, uh, it goes on and on. I mean, I think the Cuomo administration has kind of lost track of the narrative this week. And I think he got a lot of plaudits early on for being kind of data, science, data, science, facts matter, words matter, et cetera. And last week has shown that that is not necessarily what's going on. So you had a story this week with uh, two other reporters at the New York Times that showed several high-profile departures at the Department of Health over the course of the pandemic. What did you find out? Why were they leaving the agency? Well, I think by and large, there is a culture inside of the DOH at this point that is very, their morale is at an all-time low, is what we heard from one top former official. You know, I think what is going on is with the Cuomo administration for now over 10 years, he has had a reputation for being a tough boss, you know, for being very heavy handed, not only inside of agencies that he controls, but in relationships with, say, Bill de Blasio, et cetera. And I think that that attitude of I know best, my way or the highway, has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, particularly in agencies like the State Department of Health, where you are talking about a bunch of people who have trained in public health, who have given their lives over to this kind of profession that is about the public well-being. And that, in this case, you know, the, the heavy-handedness of the Cuomo administration has resulted in those people saying, this is not for me, I'm going to go. It's felt like me like this whole pandemic response has been handled exclu- exclusively by the governor and a few of his really top aides. Does your report, reporting indicate that they haven't really relied on the Department of Health or 
how does that pan out? We had multiple instances of people telling us that they were learning about policies inside the Department of Health from the news conferences. So as you and I and Byrne were watching those news conferences in the room, people over at the Corning Tower were learning about it at the same time, which is kind of mind-blowing, right? That these people should have been kind of in the loop, knowing about it, setting the policy, informing it, that they were finding about, out about it in real time. I could not imagine being those state workers and having my entire job be to respond to a public health emergency and then kind of be put on the back burner in terms of uh, in place of the, the governor's top aides. I want to go back to nursing homes for a second because I realized as we were talking, something that we don't mention a lot when we're talking about this is how this has affected the families of nursing home residents who died. Um, there was a press conference this week from the Republicans. We heard from a family, but Bern, I know you've talked to families of nursing home residents. How, how do they feel about the governor at the moment? Right. They, I mean, it's a combination of devastation and a lot of anger because they they did lose somebody and they are very upset by it but not only that it's become now a political topic it's something that they they're watching press conferences not only with the governor but with other lawmakers it's also come up in Washington and they feel like they're not being heard and they're not really you know the, their loss has just become another number so it is something that needs to be taken into effect with reporting and I I think that they have gone through a lot, and again, just to give them a voice is something that just needs to be needs to be done constantly, and you need to be reminded about it. So do we see the legislature reacting? We talked about the subpoena, but do we see lawmakers, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, reacting to the AG's report? Are they moving forward with anything? Right, so they are. Uh, at the start of next week, state Senate Democrats, they have a package of roughly 10 bills that will hopefully, if they pass and the governor signs, would button up a lot of these issues or clean up issues in long-term care facilities that frankly have stemmed far beyond the start of the pandemic, um, including, again, accurate tallies of data, how many people died in facilities, also other things like ombud the ombudsman program, which are essentially in-house advocates that, you know, volunteers that would be able to assist residents with issues, et cetera, if a family member can't be there. So lawmakers are doing something. However, again, they first started raising these questions back in the summer and a lot, they could have put in legislation and passed it in both houses, one house at least, maybe m months ago. So it just, they are doing something, but in regards to the subpoena, like Jesse said, I don't know if it will come to that. Also this week, restaurant workers are now eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. This was after our colleague Josefa Velasquez asked the governor on Monday about why he would open indoor dining in New York City and not make those workers eligible for the vaccine. A day later, the governor announced that the Biden administration is going to be boosting our vaccine supply by about 5%, so he made the restaurant workers eligible. Jesse, what happened? Uh, I, I, I think that's known as a, a flip-flop or perhaps a, an about face or about perhaps a 180. I mean, depending on, you know, pick your, pick your term, of, term of choice. But, you know, he called that cheap and insincere when he Josepha did. asked that question. And then 24 hours later, it turns out, oh, well, we'll actually do this. I don't know if he felt political pressure. I don't know if he felt that that was simply him being a little bit churlish on national television. Uh, but whatever it is, he, he changed course pretty quickly. Now, keep in mind, I think what you're saying here broader in a broader context is, you know, there's some frustration, I think, inside the Cuomo administration that there is not enough vaccine and that they are not getting the supplies they need to vaccinate people. And so that's beginning to kind of roll out. And you can kind of see it in his rhetoric. He's obviously frustrated with the pace of things. He's obviously frustrated with the criticism. And he's obviously frustrated with the fact that he doesn't really have the levers to kind of correct the problem immediately. Right, exactly. Well, we'll see how it works out in the next couple of weeks with restaurant workers now getting the vaccine. Bernadette Hogan from the New York Post, Jesse McKinley from the New York Times. Thanks so much for being here. For sure. Thanks.